I'm not sure what's going on. Looks like a nuclear missile is approaching. Good morning, everyone. We're back again today doing this inspection for an unfortunate situation that this single mum is dealing with at the moment. Now, this client has reached out to us at the start of the year and we have undertaken already an inspection. The lady here did get a lot of support, people who wanted to support her and help her out, but she decided to trust the system. She decided to stay and be focused on getting help from the government, the VBA, DBDRV, and unfortunately, it has failed. Now, what we're dealing here, we're dealing with a pergola slash balcony extension to the home and also a carport. She paid the contractor fully. Now, this contractor, he's not a registered builder. So he's undertaken roofing works, he's undertaken structural works, he's undertaken, he's dug up some, he made some footings. So there's some structural elements going on here with no building permit, nothing. The price for this job originally was 38,500 and then uh, there was a couple of other variations which came up to $43,487. Now, this included Construct and build new decking and pergola as per agreed design, steel columns, timber frame, merbu decking, stairs, steel wire balustrade, and also supply and install carport 7.8 meters by 3 meters. Now, also, there's um, uh, he, he sent a variation for her, and this is going to be a funny variation when you see it supplied and installed picture frame glass black gate with merbu inserts and a 900 mil screen panel. Now, I'm gonna show you, we're gonna go now, and I wanna show you guys what's been installed, and viewer discretion is advised, guys. Before we go inside, guys, please just take a look at these emails and text messages that were exchanged between the homeowner and the carpenter when he found out that the TikTok inspector is gonna come to site and do a video. Enjoy. I'm not sure what's going on. Looks like a nuclear missile is approaching. Can you guys hear it? I'm just about to start the inspection and this occurred. A nuclear missile, guys, is approaching. Unbelievable. Let's go inside and start the inspection before it is too late. We're also going to show you guys what happened with the VBA and also the DBDRV. A lot of fun stuff going on there. But first, I want to take you guys and show you what this guy supplied. And you be the judge of that. You tell me if you accept this work. Let's just say it's actually a death trap. It is so dangerous that... We told the client not to go onto the decking at all.
So let me show you guys what's going on. Check this out, guys. Right here. Now, there used to be an existing structure right there that got demolished. He introduced this new decking section and extended it all the way there. Now, in terms of square meters, that has increased the floor area of the structure. Not only that, guys. Now, take a good look here. Just be mindful that everything here has to get demolished. And you'll see shortly why. Let me just take you for a walk. For example, have a look at this timber right here. You can call it a bearer or you can call it a beam connecting to another structure right here, which is another beam. And let's see how this beam is connected, guys. Take a good look. Some skew nails and look what it's carrying, guys. Look what it's carrying. Have a good look, guys. So, this decking structure is connected to this beam, which is then connected to this longer beam right here, with no internal brackets, with a couple of bugle screws, guys, and some nails into the grain which is a big no-no, and I'm surprised that it's still standing. And this whole beam that I just showed you, check out how it's connected. One bugle screw and a bolt that is about to go loose. And also check out how they've done the weld. Engineers normally specify continuous weld this guy obviously didn't consult an engineer. So we don't know if this is structurally adequate. And what the hell is he gonna do here, guys? Look, it's all open. He's intending to fill this up with chipboard and a bit of decking later. And look, what the hell? Check this out, guys. And also, another fun fact, guys, is, and we're gonna go into some technical analysis of the frame shortly, but I'm just taking you guys for a walkthrough at the moment. Now, here's another fun connection for you. But have a look at the joist hangers right here that are carrying all the joists right here. Check it out. Yep, have a look at the nails. This is the nail that is on site. It's a cement sheet nail. He's used cement sheet nail, which are not meant to be used for a structure. Oh, he missed some here. Check this out. Now that I've showed you how the frame is so stuffed up, We've got this beam right here. Now what happens when this gets loaded? When this gets loaded, it's gonna force this column to go this way a bit. Now if we go down and have a look, check out the connection. Have a look at the connection. What the hell is this? <laughs> oh my God, that's unbelievable guys, look. It's being held by grass. And also, window packers. Now this is in breach of 1684, where it does state that it has to be a continuous support. Not window packers, guys, that does not do the job. This is in breach of AS 1684, and there'll be a clause on the screen for you guys to see. Now let's have a look on the other section right here. Now have a look at this footing right here. The problem with this setup right here, this steel column 
you can see how the base plate of the steel column bearing area has also been compromised. It should have been designed by a structural engineer. The intended bearing area has not been fully provided for the base plate to safely transfer the load to the footing. You can see how it is around, uh, let's see if they can measure, around 50 mil. Overhang. Take a look. The other thing is, the, we don't know the bearing capacity of the soil. We don't know the size of the footing as well. We don't know also if there's any reinforcements in, installed to the bottom of the footing. It is also incentrically loaded, not loaded center to the footing. The load is not evenly distributed into the soil through the footing. So there is a higher load on the footing in one area, which means the soil bearing capacity and the bottom reinforcement should have been taken into consideration by the structural engineer. I mean, have a look at this as well. Check this out. Check out this here. Look at this steel column connection to this timber beam. Look at that. One bugle screw and another bolt. Look what it's carrying, guys. Carrying all this load right here with just one bolt and it's, it looks like it's about to fail actually and a bugle screw and one hole couldn't couldn't get their hands in to fix it and they left a the job like that and I'm gonna put a message here to show you guys what the carpenter slash builder contractor said the homeowner noticed that there were some items here that doesn't look right she had some friends over and they said, hey mate, this doesn't look right at all. Get the, get the TikTok inspector in. So then what happened is that she sent that to the contractor and then look what he said. He goes, you can freaking drive a car up there. <laughs> Obviously he's done, he's done the same thing as what he was going to do over there. Look at this. He's got the decking resting on. Let's have a look, guys. On what? Nothing. It's floating. Look. Is this guy for real? Is this guy for real, guys? And I want to show you guys, actually, I want to also show you guys, look at this. I want to show you what is happening right there. Have a look at this beam that I showed you earlier. The one that's holding up this floor area. Check it out. Can you see how it's bowing? In cupping. I doubt that these timber members right there are treated. Have a look and you see and look how tight it is. Look at this noggin right there. Look at this block. See how tight it is? It's actually twisting. This is about to fail guys. Unbelievable. And oh, don't worry about the stairs. He forgot to install the stairs. He got paid fully for the job. Now, I'm gonna actually get up there soon and uh, take you guys for a little of, um, a little preview of what's going on here. Let me show you guys what happened here. Have a look at this, guys. Have a look at this. That downpipe is not being used anymore, but he decided to cut that whaling plate. The notching, have a look at the notching. And then he also cut through the decking when it's not being used. Is this guy on something? I don't understand. And also have a look at this balustrading, guys. Two little screws right here, holding it for you. Wow. So this is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with this structure right here that is totally unsafe the homeowner got ripped off. She didn't know any better. That this guy, you know, he's a carpenter slash builder maybe. She doesn't know, but he's a contractor online, quoted the job for her, got paid fully for the job. And this is what happened. This is what he got. This is what the homeowner got. And also guys, 
when the homeowner noticed this gap right here, she sent it to the contractor and he goes, okay, well, if you don't, I can just remove it, put a pot plant there. Wow. Now let me show you guys the carport. Now, this is the, the door and the screen. That was charged over $4,000. Let me open up the gate for you guys. Take a look, just take a look at this uh, steel column right here. Take a look at this guys. Now what happens if I shake this? It's about, this is about to crack open. This is shaking pretty bad and I'm not even putting my full force into it. Have a look at this. Oh my God, let's keep going and see what else this guy's. And look how this guy's packed it. I mean, this guy's very, very creative, guys. This guy's very creative. Have a look. Window packers combined with some washers, missing bolts. Is this guy for real? As well here, two bolts. Oh, sorry, not two bolts, one bolt. One bolt should be all right, mate. Look at this. And here, one. Two bolts. This is unbelievable, guys. I literally can't believe my eyes. Take a look at how bad this workmanship is. So obviously no, no building permit, nothing. This guy's done everything on his own. And this is what you get, guys. Take a look. Have a look at this steel column floating in mid-air. And check out the concrete works as well. Have a look. Ripped off the client, $43,000. Now let's get into the details now. Now take a look at this. We've got floor joists right here that are connected to this timber member right here which we're gonna say it is a bearer. And then also we've got, a, we've got the joist here connecting to this member as well, which we're gonna say that it is a bearer as well, bearing the weight. And then another one here, you can see guys, right there, carrying the floor loads and another one right there. Now there is minimum requirements for that. There is a minimum requirements for how many, how many members to install, the thickness, the width and all that. Now, if we were to refer to 1684.2 table 49, there is uh, a table there. It's a really simple table to read, guys. Now, we've got MGP 10 here. I'm gonna put an extra up on the screen. We've got 240 by 45 mil. So 240, 45. 240, 45. We've got a length of this member. Let's take a measure with my laser measuring device right here. 4.164 now what do the table state the table state that if we were to support an area of 1.2 meters let's just say this is going to support 1.2 meters of floor loads so basically up to here 1.2 meters this is how much going to support if you do need that, the first requirement is that it needs to have to be double. Two, two MGP 10s, 240, 45. And also it can't span more than 3.7 meters and we have 4.1 here. <laughs> oh, sorry, I shouldn't laugh, but yeah. And then let's check this one. This one as well, it's the same thing. We've got here, I mean, this one, I'm really worried about walking under here, guys. 
to be, to be for real. I mean, look how it's connected. Oh my God. So let's measure it. This one here, 4.1. And not only that, it's not, it's, there's only one. So this, for it to be standing like that as it is right now, I don't even know how it is being supported. But luckily the homeowners are not walking on that floor. Oh my God. This is beyond belief, guys. So basically, this is in breach of 1684, the Australian standard, 1684.2 table 49. There'll be an extract on the screen for you guys to know how to read this diagram. Table, it's really, really good table, guys, to refer if you don't know what's going on in the job or there's no engineering. I'm talking about the homeowners. If you want to check something like that, you just bring that table out, take a measure of the members and have a look if it's structurally okay because there was an incident in Doncaster couple of years back where the the balcony was fully loaded and I think two people passed away it actually just failed and dropped because the structure was not adequate guys so be careful it is a dangerous very very dangerous thing let's keep going the national construction Code also requires that decks and balconies that are spanning more than four meters they do require cross bracing guys now here you can see there's no bracings and it is more than 4.1 meters long right here and also one bracing unit over here and two cross bracing units over here there'll be an extract on the screen to show you guys what's going on but that is another breach this hole i mean don't worry about the bracing this has to get demolished asap all right let's go up there oh wow Check this out. Oh, hopefully this doesn't fall. Oh my God. I'm gonna walk very, very carefully. Oh yeah, I'm 122 kilos, guys. It is shaking, shaking. This is shaking, guys. Oh my God. I better be really careful because this, if this fails, this is a major issue, guys. So we better get, we better be really careful. So I'm gonna walk really carefully here but we can see that the span from this pattern right here to this pattern right here might be more than what is required by the national construction codes now let's have a look what it is so you can see that the end span is one point a meter 60 so it can't be more than 900 mil so that's the first breach guys here the first breach now i'm not sure if those patterns are actually fixed i can't tell i really can't but take a look at this rolling plate right here it's literally got so look how, how they fix this i can't see but this is probably fixed somehow and then there is zero connection to the wall and then they've notched the hell out of it which is in breach of 1684 as well and then they've got two skew nails right there and two bugle screws like are you for real bro you guys hear it i'm just walking around and this is what's going on. I'm really, I'm really scared to actually come here. But look at this, guys. This is that long beam right there that I told you guys about. That's carrying everything. And look how it's tied. Just one M12 bolt with one bugle screw. Take a look. Unbelievable. And then we have another, another timber right there carrying the battens. Look at this baton right here. Incomplete baton. $43,000. No flashing, nothing. So as I'm walking from this end towards that long uh, beam right there, I could feel that it goes down and this is correct because even my level is showing me it's going down 11 mil. We've got a level right here. There is actually a 19 mil dip down here. And then 
also goes down. Goes down this way, guys. Look. Goes down around 8 mil as well. So we've got a buckling of this beam right here. This beam right here is failing. That's why I don't understand how the VBA. Go remember, guys. The VBA has been has been contacted by the homeowner. I'll leave the extra on the screen. They sent her this beautiful this beautiful email saying, "Hey, now nah, we're going to investigate this guy." But just uh, look, if you guys can just go to the DBDRV, and we're going to go through that shortly. Go through the DBDRV, and they'll sort it out because this build this guy is is not a builder. I want to read you guys some of the messages. Are you guys ready? Can I possibly get the remaining gate in advance? It's a big ask. She goes, I can't do that. Sorry. Contractor responds. Only reason I ask is my transmission went on the Ranger today. On the way home and to get it fixed tomorrow is going to cost an arm and a leg. Or else... I wouldn't have asked. A thing that I want to talk to you guys about is an Australian standard AS 1170.1 structural design actions. Now this Australian standard has a lot of really good things inside them. and one of the items is table 3.1 that states that, um, that gives you requirements for uh, the loads per square meter. Now I'm going to do uh, just a little calculation for you guys to show you the amount of minimal requirements in terms of loads. How many kilos should this balcony take we'll do a quick calculation for example we've got 29 uh, square meters all up here now in the table it states that two kilo kilopascals is required for the balcony which is two kilonewtons for every square meter so one kilonewton is equal to 101.97 kilograms now it is required that we have to have two kilonewtons so we times up by two gives us 203.94 now we're going to round it off to 204 kilograms for every square meter which equals um which times up by 29 square meters it gives us 5914 kilos that's 5.9 tons now that standard also engineers do incorporate a safety factor of 1.5 which brings this up to 8.8 .8 tons <laughs> and you can see when i was walking around here it was shaking now if if we want to do a calculation of how many of me would fit there now i'm going to assume i'm 110 i'm actually 120 but 5.9 divided by 110 kilos is equals to 53 of me standing on there is supposed to carry and we're talking about the minimum requirements here without the safety factor and here you can see when i was walking around here i was actually shaking it was actually shaking <laughs> look at this timber it's actually bowing it's bowing down it's about to fail on its own with no live load so this is just crazy guys how can this be just sitting around like that the vba are asleep the council was asleep. They actually came here and had a look and they said, Hey, uh, did I mention that uh, you should walk on it? See ya. <laughs> That's what happened. Oh my. This contractor has undertaken all of the work that you've just seen without a permit. Now, the building regulation does exempt from getting its uh, Schedule 3 exemptions of building work and buildings. We've got here... Um, Alterations to building, if the building work will not adversely affect the structural soundness of the building and does not include an increase or decrease in floor area or height of the building. Now here, we have an increase of floor space right there. So a permit is required. Now what happens when you don't have a building permit and you carry out the work? We go to the Building Act. So we've got here, a person must not carry out building work unless a building permit in relation to the work has been issued. And that's 500 penalty units in the case of a natural person and 2,500 if it's a body corporate. So if we were to apply the 500 penalty units, which is $192.31 times it by 500 units it's $96,000 $96,000 because he's undertaken works without a building permit now if we want to go 
to another offence as well, which he may be prosecuted for. We've got also offences to carry out certain types of building work uh, unless registered or licensed. Now, that contractor is not registered with the VBA. He hasn't got a builder's license. And I'm going to put an extract on the screen for you guys. A person must not carry out type of building work that is prescribed for the purpose of this section, the relevant building works, unless the person is registered or licensed. So 500 penalty units as well. So we're talking about now $192,000 penalty for this guy that has undertaken the works. And he hasn't even provided the refund. He hasn't come back and done anything. This guy has breached multiple items. He's breached the Building Act, he's breached the Building Regulations, he's breached the Australian Standards, he's breached OHS as well. The safety issues he had are so many items. Now, the homeowner did go to the VBA guys, and I'm gonna put an extract. Let me just bring it up on my phone. So, the homeowner went to the VBA and opened up a case against this guy on the 15th of April 2023. And guess what, guys? Case closed. Case closed. Nothing happened. She got this letter. I'll put it on the screen as well for you guys. And they said that um, they're going to keep chasing it up, but just go to the DBDRV. And the DBDRV document. you got to see the DBDRV document. It's going to be on the screen for you guys as well. But check this out. Let me read one of the sections. Uh, the homeowner read... Uh, a description of what she's disputing that he's not registered he didn't give me insurance there's no permit and all that stuff and then this is his response he goes she knew all this and wanted a cheap job <laughs> unbelievable i mean have a read of all the other items guys it's just crazy Now, the funny thing is here that we have, we have the VBA, all right? Let me just read you a recent news article for the VBA that they've put on their website. And it is for a magistrate's court order. He orders a dodgy builder to pay 100K following the VBA investigation. So look, at, look what it says as well, guys. The, um, uh, the actual VBA C CEO, Anna Cronin, said this, any person found, she's saying any person here, yeah, in breach of these rules will face enforcement actions, risking financial penalties and suspension or cancellation of their registration for registered practitioners and in some cases prison. So what happened here? Nothing. Nothing happened, guys. Even this poor dog right there. He's so upset because he can't. He just have to jump off the balcony. No stairs, nothing. Unbelievable, guys. So if you guys enjoyed this video and you want to support this homeowner, please reach out to me. Reach out to our email. I'm going to put a link in the description for you guys. If anybody wants to help this homeowner, demo this whole thing because obviously the authorities have failed. The authorities have failed to help this homeowner chase the problems the authorities have failed our government has failed to help this homeowner she got ripped off dangerous structure right there and um, if you guys if anybody wants to help out this homeowner let me know because I'll be doing uh, a video that's going to document everything the demo process rebuilding this whole structure and helping this homeowner out uh, and you'll be featured on our social media as well to show your contribution to our fellow Aussies so until next time, my friends, let's go.